Hey everyone, this is the Alaska Linux user, and I know it's been a while since I made a video, but I had a little bit of free time today, and I thought that I would uh, try to cover a question that uh, a lot of people have been asking me, both on Telegram and uh, in other messaging forums. People want to know, how do I build my own GSI? How do I build a GSI? How does this even work? So, had a few minutes today, and I thought that we could take a look and see how that's done. So I did actually just do this the other day, so the great thing is we'll walk through it and then I'll be able to show you the final result as well. So if you jump onto DuckDuckGo or in Google, you can uh, Google for uh, Fusion, uh, GSI, ROM, and typically you'll have a lot of things show up, but the particular thing you're looking for is the GitHub for uh, Fusion Treble Experimentations. And I'm going to try to put a link in the description so you can go straight to that. But if we click on that, that's going to take us to his uh, release page. And in this case, uh, it may take you directly to the GitHub. So you may have ended up here, which is the repository itself with all of the scripts that's going to do the work that we need to do. And uh, you may be in the release version as well, where it has all the different releases, the releases that he's just made and put out for uh, everyone to use. So I do want to clarify real quick that everything I'm going to show you today is Fusion's work and not mine and I just want to be really clear about that because this guy is uh, genius really him and uh, Drakkar and the team that works on these things so I'm just showing you easy ways that you can build GSI's as well so if if you go ahead and click on this treble experimentation you're going to get to his repository and in this repository is a wiki and the wiki is really where you need to be because that's going to show us how that we can build and when we get to the wiki uh, we see a lot of different uh, information presented to us including a list of devices that uh, that it works or doesn't work and what type and what kind of architecture that you're going to need and this is really really important to know so if you um, don't know anything about GSI's I really recommend you read these frequently asked questions uh, where someone has taken the time to explain what Google Project Treble is and how GSI's work and whether you have an AB or an A only partition and how can you figure it out I will point out in here if you don't know for sure what you have on your phone you can check for sure using this app and so if you click on this app it's going to take you to the Google Play Store um, and you can download the Treble Info app from Hackintosh 5 and uh, go ahead and take a look at that and it'll tell you exactly what kind you need whether you need an A only or an AB or whatnot so really good it also talks about the difference between uh, floss, gap, go and vanilla and those are the different variants that uh, Fusion has put together um, pretty much the uh, very very easy way of looking at it is Floss is going to include all of these packages and whereas GAPS is going to include these GAPS packages the Google Apps from Open GAPS and uh, Go is going to be the Go edition and Vanilla is going to have none of that in it so uh, for me personally I don't use GAPS anymore GAPS, Open GAPS or any of that uh, so my preference would be to use Floss or Vanilla and typically I want to put my own uh, apps on there so I typically go with Vanilla for my own personal use but you can decide what works best for you that's the great thing about building Android so if you do have some questions about GSI and that sort of thing you can definitely uh, take a look through here a lot of good information for you to look at so back to our wiki that we were starting out at uh, you may say, well, how do I uh, build this for myself? And it's right here in the wiki, how to build a GSI. So go ahead and click on that. And there is a uh, Telegram group for uh, assistance if you do have some trouble, but this is really, really simple and it works really, really well. Uh, so we're going to take a look at that today and hopefully you'll be building before long. So what you do need is a device that's treble enabled and uh, pretty much like he says here everything that comes uh, Android 8.1 and up out of the box support it older devices only support it if somebody has gone to the trouble to make it support that so 
Uh, the first thing that you're going to do is install the ADB and Fastboot, which you can download from Google, or uh, if you're like me and you're using uh, Ubuntu uh, 20.04, you can actually just uh, download it from the repository here. Um, for instance, you can do uh, sudo apt get install, and I think it's Android tools dash ADB, and type in my secret squirrel password here and of course I already have this installed but I just want to show you that you could do it from here and then of course fast boot as well which you could download or you can click right here download them from Google unzip them like the instructions say and then add them to your path as it mentions right here works really good either way. You may need this from Google if your phone uses Fastboot D instead of Fastboot, uh, which is a Fastboot in user space, and that may require a newer version of Fastboot than what is in the repository, depending when you're watching this video, when you actually go to use your phone, uh, you may have to check that out. So, just something to keep in mind. Uh, then you need to install these build packages. So if you try to drag select all of this and paste it into your window with the command apt get install, you're going to get a lot of uh, break in the lines because of how this is formatted. So if you instead just click on each line, apt get install, and do them one line at a time, well, and it helps if you're uh, putting sudo at the front for the super user to do it instead of a regular user. And you'll see I already have these installed. I just want to make sure that we're walking through this together so you have a really good uh, feeling about how this is going to work. So we'll do the second line and of course the last line here. Now if you've built Android already on your machine not being a GSI, just regular, you may think, well, I don't need this. I've already got the tools installed. There's a few extras on here that you uh, really should make sure you download these ones to make sure that it's going to work. Uh, the next thing that you're going to do is you're going to make a directory for your bin. Now, I already have this on my machine, but it doesn't hurt to go ahead with this dash P option. It's not going to overwrite your bin if it's, uh, if it's already there. So that's making the directory of the bin, and then we're going to download the latest repo tool, which you can do here with curl, and then you're going to make it executable. So all pretty standard stuff. A lot of this you would do already if you were going to build any other ROM. So then it wants you to add this to your profile and it will say here that depending on your version of Ubuntu you may or may not have to do this. If you're using Ubuntu 20.04 which is what I'm using in this video uh, on my server then you don't need to do this because it's already in there. But if it's not, take a look, this is how you do it. Copy this into your profile, source your profile, you're good to go. And of course I've used git a lot so I don't need to configure git but if you do you would just go ahead and copy and paste this into your browser put your name instead of your name and of course your email instead of your email uh, you actually don't have to if you want you can just leave it your name and your email at example.com and it will still work so um, but I recommend you configure it for yourself if you're going to push anything in any other git instances so then of course step five is to turn on caching to speed up the build and this right here is very important if you're going to be building multiple variants, different things, and you want it to be as fast as possible. But if you're only building one, Ccache won't speed anything up for you the first time that it's run. So if it's going to run all the way through the first time you don't need Ccache, I think it's a good idea to go ahead and enable it, but it's completely up to you. This will save you a little bit of time later, but it doesn't help you for the first build. Finally, we get to step six, which is where we actually start building using uh, Fusion, Fusion's script. I'm not really sure how you say his name. I'm going to say Fusion because that sounds cool. I think it's like Fushan, uh, Husan, Fushan. I'm not sure. But it's uh, really great work that he's done here with his scripts. 
this step, step six, I do not do. This is the first way to build. The second way is step seven, and that's what I prefer to do. Third way is using Dakar's scripts in step eight, and then step nine is the fourth way, which is to build manually yourself and apply the patches manually. I have tried this, and this did not work for me. Uh, so I'm not saying that it won't work for you. Your mileage may vary, but it didn't work for me when I tried it to do it manually, especially trying to do it on something that wasn't on the list already of being done. So you'll have to experiment that and try with that out. Uh, Dracar's, or Dakar's script is really good because it has a lot more build options for you to uh, choose from. So a lot of really great stuff in there. Um, and the first script, it is really designed for building like carbon lineage um, or, uh, you know, resurrection remix, kind of the lineage based ROMs. Um, I'm sure you could use it for anything, uh, like building Android AOSP, that sort of thing. Um, I'm sure it works great. I just prefer the second method, which is step seven here. So to do that, we're going to make a directory and we'll call it uh, learning. And we'll get into that directory. And so what we're going to do is we're going to get clone the uh, repository that we looked at a few minutes ago. And so we get clone that repository. It only takes a few seconds because it's actually pretty small. It's just some really powerful scripts. And we can see that it's there now. So in that, you can nano or edit this uh, in that directory, the build shell script, which we'll take a look at that. And this is where you would choose what it is you want to build when you choose your variants. Now you're going to choose anything from Android like 8 or 9 or 10 or 11 or whatever. Um, but in here you have the option to say of that, I don't want to build every variant. So we're going to come down here to the bottom and we'll look at uh, if you're building Android 8.1, there's really no options, it's just going to do it. Or 9, there's really no options, it's just going to do it. Uh, if you're in uh, 10, there's a lot of options. And so what it's saying is, if you don't want to build some of these, you can use the pound sign or the hashtag depending what generation you're from and comment some of them out so you don't have to uh, build that variant. For instance, if your phone is not A only, you might not want any A only builds. So you can go ahead and comment those out. They're not going to get built. Uh, you have an ARM64 phone like me, then you won't want any of these ARM or ARM32. You just want the ARM64 variants. And for me personally, I don't want gaps and I don't want Go. So really the only two that I would even consider doing for myself is Floss and Vanilla, but that's a personal preference. You do what works best for you. But if you're going to build Android 10, you'd go ahead and comment these out in here. If you're going to build Android 11, it's a little more convoluted looking, but it works the same. You have all of your uh, variants over here. So if you want to do an ARM64 vanilla, you would leave these lines. If you want to do ARM64 floss, you leave these lines. If you want to do ARM32, or maybe in my case I don't, so I would comment these out. So those just go away. ARM32, don't want those. ARM32, don't want those. ARM64, but with gaps, not interested. So I'll go ahead and take that off the list. ARM32, don't need that. ARM32. And so that saves you time from building where you don't want to build all of those things. So that's just showing you how you can edit that script. That's what they're talking about here, but it doesn't look quite the same because this is a little bit old compared to Android 11, which they've added in here. So I'll go ahead and press Control X to exit. Y to save and save that. Now I will note if you uh, just installed Ubuntu 20 to do this, nano may not be installed and you'll have to sudo apt-get install nano to make that work. But the next thing that you're going to do is you're going to make a directory for whatever it is you want to build. In this case we'll say AOSP 11 and we'll CD into AOSP 11 and from there we're going to go dot dot so we will, it, we're telling the computer to look back 
in the previous directory in that treble experimentations and bring up the build Is that not working how I want? I did put it in here, right? Yeah. Okay. So we're saying uh, bash dot dot go back to our treble experimentations build dot shell, and now we're going to choose what we want to build. In this case, I want to build Android dash eleven point zero, right? And it's going to go back into that uh, repository we just downloaded and look at that script look at what we wanted to build and going to start doing that process so the first thing that it's going to do it's going to download all your source code this is going to take a while then after it's downloaded the source code it's going to download some patches and apply those patches to your source code and then build the variants that you chose to build once it's built those variants, normally it builds it in the out folder, which it does here, but it's going to copy it from the out folder to a special folder called the release folder. And in that release folder, you're going to find your different variations that you've built. So once it's built that variant, it's going to copy it to the release folder, wipe the out folder, and build the next variant. So that way there's no uh, kind of cross-contamination between the different um, choices that you had. So hopefully that makes a lot of sense. It actually works really, really well. Uh, that's the last step because after that uh, is just different various methods of doing this. It uh, says here if you want to compress the system image after a build finishes, if you were doing this manually, you would run this command. And this gets run when you do it automatically. So we'll go ahead and take a look at the one that I just built the other day. Uh, rather than letting that finish because that would take several hours to download all of the material and then to build. Uh, on my machine using the Dell PowerEdge uh, R520 32 gigs of RAM it takes about two and a half hours to build the two variants. Um, your mileage may vary depends on the processors and the speed of your processors and the RAM that you have available and the speed of your hard drives really is is the big one uh, as well and as far as downloading the material that really depends on your internet speed uh, expect to spend several hours just waiting for all of the source code to be downloaded but let's take a look in the uh, AOSP 11 here uh, we can see there is the release folder so we're going to CD into this release folder and we'll see that just a few days ago I built uh, using this script and we can see in here we have the system ROAR ARM64 AB Vanilla Image XZ so if you want to unzip that it's not really zipped uncompress that uh, you will need uh, unXZ to be able to comp uncompress that and make that into a usable uh, image for you. Make sure that you do that before you try to flash it because it will not work if you flash it as a compressed image. So uh, just something to keep in mind there. Um, I did test this out on my phone and it worked out really great for me. I do want to show you though if we go look in the out folder we'll see the target folder and in there we see our product folder and under the product we see the GS GSI uh, ARM 64 AB that was built so this is what was built and then copied to that release folder and renamed as appropriate but you could just take it straight from here from the system folder as well but keep in mind if you're building multiple variants this will get deleted as uh, as it goes through the different variants to move it I also want to show you where you can go to make some changes if you were interested. Now making any changes is going to deviate from the procedure that is here so this do at your own risk but if you go to the devices and under the devices you go to PHH and you go to treble uh, you're going to see uh, the different uh, models there so PHH 
uh, GSI and we'll go with the um, A64 uh, AB which is you know for the phone that I built for uh, you can look in here and you have this board config.make uh, you also can look in here and you have your different variations so treble arm and then this is A is going to be like uh, uh, if I'm not mistaken A is A only and B is going to be an AB so you would say you want to look at the treble arm 64 AB and we want a vanilla and whether or not it has uh, super user or no super user uh, app and uh, super user permission installed. So you can take a look at these. You can do a little bit of editing and tweaking if you'd like, but uh, no guarantee on what will happen when you do that. Um, but that is why we do what we do, right? So we can learn great things, do new things, and uh, have a lot of fun. So hopefully this video was helpful in just helping you to uh, take a look at how do you build a GSI and I uh, hope that made sense and feel free to uh, comment below and, uh, and just let me know if that worked out good for you or not and I really appreciate you taking the time to watch this video